I want to share with you an interesting tuning related issue that is happening with my copter. I'm in the process of switching from 3S to 4S and from 6 inch props to 5 inch props. And as a result, of course, I'm, I'm having to basically do a complete retune of my copter. Uh, and something really interesting happened yesterday while I was doing my first set of tuning. Uh, and let's take a look at it. So first I'm just going to show you the video. And what I want you to watch for is that as I raise the throttle, the copter uh, becomes destabilized. Uh, in one case, it yaws to the left. Uh, in another case, it, it rolls to the right and pitches forward a little bit. So it happens pretty quickly, but just watch for it. And if you want, if you want to go back and watch this on replay a couple times, I've got the sticks overlaid. You can see that it's not the result of me moving the sticks. Okay, so let's watch the video. All right, so hopefully you see you can see that. If not, go back and watch it again and until you see what I'm talking about. Now, normally, if I were seeing uh, throttle-related destabilization on some axis, my first thought would be uh, that you need to raise the eye gain on that axis. But what's happening here doesn't really feel like um, a low eye gain. One thing that is inconsistent with low eye gain is that as soon as I lower the throttle again, the copter immediately and, and powerfully writes itself. And the eye term correction is usually relatively we weak and relatively slow. And this doesn't feel, this. I would need really high eye gain to see the kind of strong, aggressive correction. As soon as the throttle comes back down again, the copter straightens right back out again. Uh, so that's, that's kind of unusual uh, and, and not really consistent with eye gain. Um, the other thing is that uh, usually with, with uh, throttle-related coupling and low eye gain, we wouldn't see the, the destabilization come on as quickly and, and sharply as what we're seeing here. So this, doesn't, this really just doesn't feel like an eye term issue, okay? So the other, uh, also, last thing about that is it seems to come on at a very consistent uh, throttle position around 1600, 1550 or 1600. And again, if you go back and watch those videos, uh, watch the playback, um, you'll see that the copter, especially in the third one, I raised the throttle relatively slowly on that one so I could feel out what was going on. And the copter kind of stays the same, kind of stays fine, it stays flat until right around 1550 or 1600 on the throttle. And then poof, it suddenly just pitches right over. So, so it's a very odd thing here, and it doesn't seem consistent with low with, with a, any of the PIDs, really. So, but let's go ahead and take a look at the PIDs and see what they're doing. Take a look at the motors and see what they're doing. So uh, here I've got the PID and gyro on the roll axis up, and uh, I'm going to reduce the playback speed to 50% so we can, we can really see it happening uh, in slow-mo. And we'll just play that forward now. <laughs> So right here, we can start to see something happening, right? We can see that as we raise the throttle here, the P, you know, the, there's a little bit of I term, positive I term. That's, you know, normal to see the I term compensating for a little bit of bias as you're flying. Nothing wrong with that, right? P and D are relatively small, fine. And then right here, and look at the throttle position, 1570. The I term just falls off a cliff. So the I term is now beginning to correct for some kind of error or bias that is that is occurring, that has started occurring. The P term does the same thing. And the gyro, now this notice that the gyro is showing us starting to drift to one side. And of course P and I are trying to compensate for that. And I goes hard negative until the moment that I drop the throttle back down again. So something's happening here, right? Which is a shocker. We knew that. Um, and we see that P and I, so we could ask ourselves, when the copter turned to the right, 
and we didn't command that, is that because the PID loop was doing something wrong? Did the PID loop contribute to the problem or was it trying to correct for the problem? And we can see here that the problem is that we are rolling to the right, the gyro is going positive, and we can see that the PIDs did nothing to contribute to that problem and in fact are attempting to compensate for the problem. So the problem is happening externally and the PIDs are trying to correct it and failing. So it's an important question that we can ask ourselves whenever we're dealing with tuning. Is this a problem that is being caused by something to do with the PIDs or is it, uh, is it being caused externally and the PIDs are trying to correct it? Um, and that we can see that, that, that it's the latter. Also, we could have a case where the problem is being caused externally and the PIDs are inadequate to respond to it, right? Should they be pushing stronger? And we, if we look at the motors, we can help uh, assess whether that's the case. So if we look at the motors here, what do the motors do? First of all, notice that when I'm flying, most of the time the motors are pretty close to each other, right? None of the motors are particularly stronger than the others. Obviously, when we're when we're flying forward, some of the you know, depending on what we're doing, some of the motors will be stronger or weaker. But overall, they're together. And then as I raise the throttle, coincident with the I term and going way negative, notice that this one motor goes way off the top of the chart. And in fact, this is a relatively mild example. But in fact, in another example, in the other two examples, it goes right off the top of the chart and maxes out. So. Um, we can see that again the PIDs are they're attempting to correct the issue by spinning up this motor the problem is that we're pitching forward and we're rolling to the right and that's the front right motor is being spun up to try to correct that meanwhile these motors are being kept at a more moderate level right and it's spinning up but the problem is not being corrected and if we go look at the other examples we can see that basically the same thing happens here right here the front right motor actually maxes out for some time the problem is still not corrected. So what we're seeing here is there's some kind of externally induced problem. The PID loop is attempting to correct it and is coming up against the bounds of its authority. Once the motor maxes out, there's not much more you can do. Okay, And, and the question that we need to answer is what is causing that externally induced problem? In order to answer that question, the first place I went was the, the fact that the problem seems to consistently come on at a specific throttle position um, and around 1550 or 1600 uh, microseconds. And I thought maybe uh, my prop is too soft for 4S and is deforming and is making less thrust. It seemed like, a, it seemed like this front right motor had stopped making thrust Right, it's, so the motor has stopped making thrust and the PID loop continues to try to spin it faster and faster to correct the issue. The issue is not corrected, so the PID loop continues to spin it faster and faster and faster and faster, and it's still not making thrust and eventually the motor maxes out. Okay, um, it, so I, I thought, well, maybe the prop is deforming. Well, that didn't really make sense because even if the prop was deforming, by the way, I had spun the prop up on the bench and I, I didn't hear any sounds of flutter or anything, but any sort of buzzing noise that would mean that it was uh, it was unsuited for the 4S that I was using it at. You know, it's a 50-40 prop. It's not a particularly aggressive prop. You know, so, so that's, that's really not the issue, but that's kind of the direction my mind went. Why is this motor stopped making thrust? That's the question. And thank you to Quad McFly on RC Groups who suggested that I check my uh, ESC calibration, my ESC endpoints, because that turned out to be the issue. So I, I don't know how this happened. Um, I have done. I have been doing some work on my copter. I've had my ESCs disconnected from the flight controller, and uh, and apparently sometimes with some ESCs, uh, if they're disconnected from the flight controller and you power them up, uh, there can be some kind of noise on the signal line that fakes them into thinking that you're doing a throttle calibration. And that's my best guess as to what happened here. Uh, these are little b ESCs, by the way, running BL Heli 14.2. And, uh, and sure enough, I logged into BL Heli Suite, and the max endpoint for all four ESCs 
It's normally around 1960 or 1970. I have max throttle set to 2000, and that's just normally where they end up when I calibrate. All the ESCs were at around 1560 to 1570. And sure enough, that explains what's happening here. So until the throttle, and by the way, this is my throttle stick position, but of course that doesn't directly correspond to what uh, clean flight or is outputting to the motors. But as I raise the throttle, the motors spin up, spin up, spin up, spin up, until they reach around 1550 or 1600. And at that point, all of the ESCs are spinning at 100% because that's where the ESC believes that the endpoint of the throttle channel is. So at that point, all of the ESCs are maxed out. Now normally when clean flight detects that a motor is maxed out, if another motor needs to spin up even higher, clean flight will bring the other three motors down so that the fourth motor is stronger in, in comparison to them. But since clean flight doesn't know that the ESC is already maxed out because clean flight believes that it has another 400 microseconds of throttle to go, right? But the ESC thinks that 1550 or 1560 or wherever it is, is the top of the, of the range. So the ESC is at 100% clean flight. is like, okay, well, I'm just going to spin this motor faster and keeps raising the signal. But this motor is already actually spinning at 100%. Clean flight just doesn't know it. There's a mismatch in the throttle channel range. And as clean flight continues to try to spin the motor up, it's only when this motor, when clean flight believes that the motor is at max, that clean flight then brings the other motor down to compensate. And this is the point where the copter restabilizes itself at the new attitude. Okay? So we have a mismatch in the endpoints between the ESC and clean flight. Clean flight believes that the throttle range is 1,000 to 2,000. The ESC believes that the throttle range is 1,000 to about 1,560. Okay, so when clean flight reaches 1,560, the ESC is actually at 100% and has no more power to give. So we did have a scenario where this motor stopped making thrust, but it wasn't because there was anything defective about the motor in terms of like, you know, the prop stopped making thrust or the motor started losing power or maybe we hit the ERPM limit. I thought, well, maybe I'm hitting the ERPM limit. But no, these are 2250 kV motors running on 4S. We're nowhere near the e e ERPM limit of a uh, little bit ESC. Nowhere near, right? So maybe if this was something like a 2600 kV motor on a, on a you know, a high voltage 4S pack, we would be close to that limit, but not not this. So the motor did stop making thrust, but it stopped making thrust because actually it was already at 100% and clean flight just didn't know it. And I recalibrated my ESCs and everything. Uh, well, I haven't actually made it yet, but I have a, a strong feeling that everything's going to be fine. Um, so what's the takeaway here? Uh, it's very important that your ESC endpoints be calibrated to your flight controller's throttle range. Um, if there is a little bit of mismatch, a little bit of mismatch, the flight controller will be able to compensate with the PID loop. But if there's too much mismatch, you're going to get this scenario where from here to here, that's how long it took before the flight controller like was able to figure out something in right here. Okay, So they need to be calibrated. And the other thing is that uh, this is more of a problem with some ESCs than others. Uh, I've never run into this before, but I've heard from Quad McFly that there are other people who are having this issue with the little b specifically that once you have calibrated your endpoints on your ESCs, go into BL Heli Suite and turn off throttle calibration. Let me see if I can find uh, find that for you. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. BL Heli Suite. Yeah, right here, right here at the top where it says programming by TX. Once you have, if you're going to do a uh, throttle calibration using the motors tab, Go ahead and do that, but then as soon as you're done, turn that off, and that will prevent your ESCs from ever accidentally recalibrating themselves if you power them up uh, when they're not connected to a flight controller, for example, and there's some noise on the line. Alrighty, well, hope that was interesting, hope that was helpful, and as always, happy flying.